Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks for tuning in. In this video, I will be giving an honest review and my personal experience in university accommodation. Now, I have been a student for five years from 2015 to 2020, so I have quite a lot to share because uh, I have tried different sorts of options for my university accommodation. So, in my first year, since uh, I'm from Cyprus and I came to study in Scotland, so in the UK, and it was a new country and a new city for me and the first time away from my home country and from my family, I thought to play it safe. So I stayed in university halls. And uh, having a look at the prices, it's much cheaper compared to five years later. So back then in 2015, it was maybe 129 pounds. And right now, it, the last time I checked, it was 141, so you can see, per week. So you can see it was a massive increase. Uh, the advantages were that it was right next to lectures and right next to the library, and I could uh, go to the lecture in less than five minute walk. Oh, I had no commuting, for example, I didn't have to catch the bus or the subway or the train in the morning, so that was very practical. However, uh, I had uh, also some good flatmates, and for that to happen, I made sure in my application that my flatmates were classified as friendly and non-smoking, because I'm a non-smoker myself. Also, all my flatmates were the same gender as me. Moving on to second and third year, I decided to stay in private accommodation in the same place for both years, and there were quite a few issues. I didn't have the best flatmates in none of the two years, like they made a massive mess and um, very responsible. They were all the same gender as me. Uh, I had serious issues with the bathroom and uh, the reception staff were not very helpful. And also, I think I got tricked with the price because uh, it was advertised there's going to be a price freeze and uh, since that date, the prices are going to be the cheapest they will ever get. Since then, they will be ex more expensive. However, uh, one week later, I saw a reduced price and I asked what happened and they told me that the rooms were not getting sold. So that's why they reduced it. And I was like, can I get the reduced price since I had already agreed for the more expensive one? And they're like, you can if you find someone else to stay with you. And I tried very hard, but unfortunately I didn't. So for the same room, for the same um, product, I was paying the same amount that uh, I was paying a, a different amount than my flatmates were. Now, I didn't like that, and in fourth year I changed, and I went somewhere else, which was, um, which had, was on the eighth floor, so I had a very nice view. However, and I had some good flatmates, uh, they were this time a mix, so half male, half female. However, the, there were issues with the lift, because I was on the eighth floor and we had to walk. And also there was an issue with maintenance, so they came to clean the kitchen and to inspect the rooms, but they left the door unlocked and I was back in my home country, so I could have been stolen by my flatmates. Fortunately, I was not. Moving on to fifth year, I wanted to save some uh, money, so reduce my expenses, so I went to a private flat uh, where I, it was basically a room share, so me and another five people, I only knew one of them. And with this guy, I shared the room, so we paid half each. Of course, that comes at the cost of not having your own privacy and maybe some differences in sleeping hours, in keeping the window open, in listening to music, all sorts of things. So not the best experience, but I saved some money. Also, this flat share was uh, maybe 30 minutes away from the city, so I had to wake up uh, significantly early and I had to get to the subway every day. Fortunately, the subway station was right next to the flat However, um, if I had to rely on the subway. Sometimes there was uh, a delay and I was late on my lectures. And also there was a football stadium right next to it. So uh, because of that, there was a massive queue in the subway whenever there was a football game. So you'd have to stand in the queue or find another way like walk or cycle. Again, it was a mix of half female and half male. Now, my tip overall is if you're a foreign student, make sure with your university that the courses will be physically taught before paying for flights, accommodation, and maybe even a visa. Unless, if you want to find a job intending to stay in the country you study at, or to extend your visa, or you want to get settled status after Brexit by reaching uh, five years in the UK, then you might want to come anyway. However, uh, regarding this, it totally depends on your course, because some courses, they would require you to come here physically because um, you need to attend the laboratory, for example, 
while other courses uh, are going to be 100% online and you're going to just waste your money. Uh, of course, uh, in the UK there is a, a quality of life that is better and the salaries are higher, but also it could be more expensive than your home country sometimes. Now, if you are a student, uh, most times than not, you're going, more times than not, you're going to get into a student debt and you might want to start reducing it and you might have some time in your hands. So one idea could be to start a side hustle. If that interests you, you can go to www.nicolasgetos.co.uk, insert your name and email, and watch my free web class where you will learn the three secrets my mentors use to generate a consistent income online and how you can do it too, even if you have no previous experience, qualifications, or no product to sell. If you're a subscriber, I will catch you on the next video. Thank you for watching and bye for now.